I was in the basement this morning, and I'm pretty sure I met the ghost of Joseph Lister. He kept telling me to wash my hands. What is that? Human Subject 957 here. It's day 17 and I am a tiny man in a big fake museum. Uh, in 1940, Robert Wadlow, the tallest human being in recorded history, died in his sleep at the age of 22 and at the height of 8 feet 11 inches. The real tragedy, however, was not his death, but rather his life. Toward his later years, this pituitary problem of his required him to use leg braces to get around. Had he been born just 10,000 years earlier, he could have easily traversed the landscape riding the backs of a variety of prehistoric giant mammals. Giant mammals made their first appearance on Earth about 60 million years ago. Things resembling mammals in general had been around for 100 million years prior to that, but they were smaller, the earliest weighing in at about a pound, and were probably carried around in the designer purses of prehistoric socialite heiresses. Not long after the dinosaurs got back in their spaceships and flew home, or died out, whichever you want to believe, mammal sizes grew drastically. These were the days of the Paleogene period, a quieter, more innocent time when you could leave your front door unlocked and when mammals weighed 17 tons. At six and a half tons, today's largest mammal is the African elephant, which is now just embarrassing. That 17-ton mamma jamma I was just talking about? That was a giant hornless rhino known as the Paracervatherium, or what I like to call the giant hornless rhino. Also referred to as the giraffe rhinoceros because of its ridiculously long neck, it stood up to 18 feet tall at its shoulder and measured up to 30 feet from head to hiney. His head alone measured 5 feet, which means if he wanted to, he could eat you in one bite, or Robert Wadlow in maybe two bites. But luckily for everyone during the 14 million years this guy was around, he was a vegetarian. Now, at 14 million years, you might be thinking, why, that's got to be the world's longest living species of vegetarian ever. And you would be wrong for so many different reasons. For one, they're not vegetarians, they're herbivores, but that was my fault. For another, per is a genus, not a species. And finally, 14 million years ain't nothing. Check out the calicotheres. Neither a species nor a genus, calicotheres is a family of gorilla horses that hung around for over 55 million years, and possibly longer, but more on that in a second. Calicotheres' most prominent feature is that they're kind of freaky looking. We do know that they were parasodactyls, which describes odd-toed browsing mammals, something I didn't realize needed its own word. Gallivanting around the plains and forests on squat little hind legs and standing nine feet tall at their front shoulders, they had to use their claws to pull vegetation off of trees because they didn't have any front teeth on their upper jaw. So, if I had to guess, I'd say Calicothair was high in the running for best whistler of the Cenozoic era. And there are some that believe the Calicothair might still be the best whistler to this very day. Uh, except for the whistling part. In Africa, they've got this thing called the Nandi Bear. It's basically the Sasquatch of Kenya, a legendary beast that's said to have high front shoulders and a sloping back, and largely matches the description of the calico there. Though sightings were mostly reported in the 19th and into the early 20th century, the Nandi Bear is said to be a ferocious carnivore who only eats brains. Based on what we know about calico there's eating habits, I think it's safe to conclude that paleontologists are all crackpots. Calico there's eat brains, morons. That don't sound like no herbivore to me. A list of giant mammals is incomplete without mentioning the giant beaver. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, imagine a beaver eight feet long. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, this 200 pound beaver. <laughs> Sorry, would you stop tickling me? Just. Just stop. Go. Go away. It's rude. Um... Uh, wait, who was that? Unlike today's more modestly sized beavers, giant beavers didn't really spend much time building dams, unless you ask certain people in Ohio. It's a thing. They are believed to have been too bulky to move around on land for any extended period, which happened to be right here in the Quaternary as recently as 10,000 years ago. In fact, recent studies point to their extinction not from climate change, but by early North American hunters, who probably enjoyed the tasty meat of giant beavers on a regular basis. Another huge North American beast likely hunted to extinction, the giant short-faced bear. On its hind legs, it stood about 12 feet tall, which likely equates to a six feet tall on all fours. Now that may not be impressive to you because you're still reeling from the 18 foot tall giraffe rhinoceros. Well, I got sour news for you, Jack. While you're looking over there watching that giraffe rhino munch away on a piece of celery, giant short-faced bear over here just ate your butt off. Just ate your butt right off. 
The giant short-faced bear was the largest carnivorous mammal ever to set foot in North America, so show a little respect, bucko. Finally today, class, I'd like to talk about the giant sloth. While giant beaver and giant bear were duking it out in North America, giant sloth was tooling around South America with a whole slew of other freaks. See, South America at the time was cut off from other continents and thus cultivated its own wacky assortment of wildlife, not unlike Australia today with their kangaroos and goofy version of football. The largest of the sloths was about the size of a modern day elephant and weighed roughly five tons and had massive sharp claws, so it could kill you if it wanted to. Again, though, it was a herbivore. Or was it? A Uruguayan paleontologist noticed that the forearms of some giant sloths were built for fast movement, and fast movement in forearms usually means predatory action. But I went to a vegetarian restaurant in Uruguay once, and not only was I able to order a steak sandwich, but the steak sandwich turned out to be ham and cheese between two pieces of steak. That's a true story. So I'm not confident this Uruguayan paleontologist even knows what a herbivore is. If you'd like to learn more about prehistoric giant mammals, look it up, you bum. And if you already know more, leave your wisdom in the comments. This is Human Subject 957, signing off.